I don't think it's ambiguous. I really don't. I think it's very clear. I think that the signs are there. I think that the steps have already been made in certain uh, in certain roads and certain aspects. And I think it's pretty obvious what's going on. And I want to share that with you today. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds, it's the Appraiser Coach Podcast. Minisode. 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 Welcome to the program, everybody. Dustin Harris hanging out in the podcast chair. Just got a quick minisode. Well, I think it'll be quick. Maybe I'll... uh, I'll uh, ramble at the mouth. We'll see. Uh, I want to pause here and remind you, of course, we are sponsored by A Now Software. <laughs> I had an experience with A Now Software yesterday that I can't wait to tell you about. But uh, for now, check them out. Go to anow.com slash coach. One more time, it's anow.com slash coach. Well, folks, I'll tell you the reason for this mini-sode today, and it is coming off of a couple of national conferences uh, that uh, that I recently attended. And I, I, I came away with the exact same experience in both of them. In fact, I'll even add one more thing to the mix. Um, I got back and I actually did a national uh, webinar put on, sponsored by another company. They asked me to, to, to host it. And again, very, very similar. And here's, here's what I came away with, both from the conferences and this webinar. Appraisers are scared. Appraisers are fearful about the future until they start to learn what the future is going to bring. And it's my hope today that I can pause and and just step back for a little bit, take a deep breath, and talk about the future and talk about reality and talk about where I see things going because I don't think it's ambiguous. I really don't. I think it's very clear. I think that the signs are there. I think that the steps have already been made in certain uh, in certain roads and certain aspects. And I think it's pretty obvious what's going on. And I want to share that with you today. Uh, I want to start by talking to you a little bit about technology. Uh, a little bit about uh, where the technology is going, and I'm not talking about distos and uh, and you know doing appraisals on your phone today. Okay, I'm talking about the technology that is out there for data. Uh, there is a lot of technology out there, and what I mean by data, I mean data that that is inputted into your report. I mean data that is uh, is being taken from your report. Uh, I know there's a lot of strong feelings on that side of things. I mean. We used to, as an appraisal profession, be the keeper of the data, if you will. Uh, Ghostbusters comes to mind. <laughs> I, am the, I am the data keeper, right? And it used to be the case. Uh, realtors, homeowners, uh, lenders, they would come to us because we owned the data. And when I say owned, I mean we controlled it. And that's really what ownership is all about, right? Well, maybe we didn't own the MLS, but, but, but we, we were the only ones that subscribed to it. If they wanted sales, if they wanted listings, they had to come to us because that's the way it worked. Well, guess what, folks? The world's changed. It's not that case anymore. De- George Dell was on my program uh, about a year ago, I think. And uh, he said that. He said, you know, for years and years and years, appraisers have been the keepers of the data. And now they are the analysts of the data. That's what's changing. And that that's where that's where this is going. And I know a lot of people are up in arms right now when it comes to data. I, I see it on the forums. I see it in person when I talk to appraisers. A lot of them are frustrated because, hey, so and so stole my data, or you know, UAD takes my data without my permission, and they won't even share it back. I mean, I get it. I understand it. And and there's reason to be concerned. I'm not saying that those fears and those those concerns are not something that we should talk about, not something we we should we should analyze and and maybe be concerned about and maybe call for some change. I'm not saying that's not the case. But I also am a realist. I'm an optimist, but I'm a realist. And the realist side of me says, you know, part of this is just reality. Part of this is that's where things are going. And, and, and what are you going to do about it? Certainly, I'm not saying we should not encourage change. We should. Absolutely, we should fight for change. And we should better our lives and we should better our profession wherever we possibly can. But a lot of this, when it comes to profitability, when it comes to being successful as a business owner, has to do with being able to realize, recognize, and kind of on some level accept that some of these things are changing. And then we need to make some business decisions. And then we need to step back and say, okay, here's reality. Here's where things are going. And what am I going to do about it? 
And if some of you say, you know what, by hell, I'm screw it. I'm going to go do something different. You know what? My hat's off to you. I don't. I don't feel badly about that at all. I think that 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 for some people that is that is the direction they need to go. For those of us who want to stay in the valuation profession, we need to step back and need to say, you know, maybe it's time that I change my business model a little bit. Let me tell you a quick story. Uh, prior to 2000, well, I was going to say 2008, but in Idaho, it actually didn't hit us till about 2010. Uh, we were a little bit slow to the housing bubble crash. Okay, what hit Las Vegas and Phoenix in 2008 didn't hit East Idaho till 2010. At the time, I had four, and I know a lot of you are saying, well, you had two years uh, to, uh, to, to get on board, Dustin. <laughs> you had two years to get ready. Yeah, except I was a little bit Pollyannish and actually didn't think it would hit us like it did others. And it didn't. We didn't get hit as hard as others, but, but it still hit us. I actually thought that we might even uh, avoid it. I was wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, in, in 2009, uh, I had about uh, four appraisers working for me. And then, of course, I was uh, working in the business as well. And so as a consequence, there were um, five of us in, in, the, uh, in the business, in the, in the firm, if you will. And we were running a pretty successful business. We would, we would uh, head out every morning and we would go to our various areas and we would do inspections and we'd spend the afternoon uh, writing up reports together. And, and, and actually, it was a, a lot of fun. I, I miss that business model sometimes because it was, it was interesting and it was fun and it was enjoyable and it was profitable and we had a lot of success that way. Well, 2010 came, folks, and it just did. Uh, it came and it slapped us all in the face. And even though I was a little bit of, uh, ahead of the curve because I kind of saw it coming, I put some some things in motion in order to uh, uh, to land on my feet. Uh, it still came kind of as a shock. It still came as a as a challenge. And I'll tell you this, folks. I'll save you all the nitty gritty details. I might share that, you know, in a co in a personal coaching call or with my all star team or my dream team or what have you, because there's a lot of details in there as to why this happened. But I will say this, one thing that did happen is I'm more profitable now than I was before. Now, I'm not making more money gross receipts than I was before, but I'm more profitable. My take home is, is more than it was in 2009, 2008, 2007. Why is that? Well, it was because I changed my business model and it wasn't easy and it was hard and, and, and a lot of it was psychological you know, hey, this has always worked. I want it to keep working, right? Well, that doesn't always give us a, a, a leg up on our competition when we're not willing to step back and realize that, uh, that we need to do things differently. Speaking of doing things differently, folks, how are you managing your appraisal office currently? How are you keeping track of everything that's going on? When you work on your business, not in your business, are you spending a lot of time crunching numbers or can you just answer the questions immediately? How profitable are we this month? How many non-lender assignments have we done this month? Uh, how late are we on reports? How quickly are we turning things over? Can you answer those questions quickly or is it more of a challenge? Well, folks, it was more of a challenge for me until I found ANOW software. ANOW is the ability to be able to manage your entire appraisal office and uh, – I tell you, it's absolutely incredible. I cannot say enough good about it. A now is is amazing. And yesterday, I met with the guys at A now. They showed me all the things that are coming this next year. Ho, ho, ho. Hold on to your horses, folks. This, you know, a, a great product is getting better. Uh, check them out. Go to a now dot com slash coach. One more time, it's a now dot com slash coach. Welcome back to the program, folks. I won't keep you too much longer. I just wanted to make the point, you know, coming off of these conferences uh, over the last couple of weeks and doing this webinar that I did recently with a, with a national company, I'll tell you, there is a lot of fear out there. But this is what I found. After two days of being at a conference or after an hour on a webinar, I find that attitudes are changing. I find that appraisers are willing to accept that the change is coming, and this is the key they're willing to change with the industry. Now, what does that mean for you? What does that mean? What does this mean for desktops and bifurcated products and, and all of this? And this is not an endorsement of any of that. Whether you decide 
to participate in those types of things or not. And there's a lot of good reasons not to, okay? Fees being one of them. Whether you choose to participate or not, you've got to step back, ladies and gentlemen, and make a decision. What will you do with your business moving forward? Okay, it's 2010 all over again. Things are changing. There's probably some some voice that needs to be heard, some challenges to that change, if you will, and some pushback. And then at the end, you've got to decide whether or not you can or even want to be a part of that change. You've got to decide what procedures, what ways of doing things, what business models need to be changed in your own life in order to be profitable into the future. It's up to you. I can help you do that. That's what I do as, a, as, as my, my coaching side of things, my mentoring side of things. And I'm doing that on a regular basis. Right now, we have a product out there that is a five or 10 session one-on-one with me. And I'm doing a lot of those right now, either 30 or 60 minute conferences, whether it be uh, video, which is my preference uh, on the computer to be able to see you, see your, your facial uh, body language, if you will. Or we can do it over the phone, either way. But, but I'm helping appraisers to position themselves to be successful into the future. And it's fun. It's exciting. It is. I find that people don't usually come to me if they are upset, if they're angry, and if they're fearful about the future. Most people have to get over that hump before they come to me because I'm going to teach them how to be successful as a business owner moving forward. They've already decided that, that, that the change is coming and they don't want to run a coffee shop. They want to be an appraiser. And there is, I'll tell you this, folks, the future is bright for appraisers. It is. If there's anything I learned from these conferences and this webinar is that, yes, change is coming, but we don't need to fear it. Yes, that change is coming, but the future is bright for the valuation profession. I'm absolutely convinced of that. No, I'm not being Pollyannish, I don't think. Uh, I think I'm being a realist. I think that, that the future is bright. Yes, our business is going to look much different in three years than it is today. That's a fact. And, and we can either change our business models or we can move on, and, and that's fine too. I respect either one of those decisions. If you are one that wants to change your business model and learn more about how you can be more profitable, reach out to me. Go to the theappraisercoach.com. Reach out to my assistant. I'll give you my phone number. It's 208 208- Seven four five nine three three zero. Pick up the phone, call call Lee, and uh, ask her what I can do to help. It is my goal, as a coach, as a mentor, as a fellow appraiser, to help my appraiser colleagues, my peers, my colleagues, my fellow professionals to be successful. I want the appraisal industry to thrive in the future. I think it can. Thank you for being part of the show today. Thank you for being a part of this great profession, and I look forward to the future together. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value.